Hello, I'm Dave Getz, retired U.S. Army military police officer, more commonly known as simply Major Dave. And I was recently contacted by a friend and asked to look into issues surrounding the 90,000 or so ballots that were dumped into the election night returns at a very late hour from Durham County that made a huge swing in the outcome, putting Roy Cooper ahead of Governor McCrory for the first time all evening. So to get started, let me say from the beginning that I'm making this video for three reasons. One, because I think it's the best way to respond to my friend's concerns. Two, I can. And three, I think I should. Now, I've not coordinated this work with any candidate or campaign committee, nor have I been compensated by any such to do so. My friend suggested that the vote totals seem to be inconsistent with the actual population data for the county and provided me with links to the U.S. Census Bureau and Durham County government web pages. Now, I've now looked at these numbers and have found some very alarming statistics. Now, I know Governor, uh, the Cooper campaign is saying there's absolutely no credibility to claims of voter fraud. But as a trained investigator, I have to disagree. You know, the legal definition of probable cause is, quote, facts and circumstances amounting to more than a mere suspicion. It's the substance of any investigative agency's authority to proceed in investigating further. So, do the facts and circumstances here amount to more than a mere suspicion? Let me give you the numbers and you decide. So to begin with, I went to the Durham County government's own website to see what they were citing as the population of the county. Now their figure shown here is 295,373 as of July of this year. Now the most recent data from the U.S. Census Bureau shows that 21.7% are under the age of 18 and thus ineligible to vote. Now that leaves us with a voting age eligible population in Durham County of 78.3% or 231,277. Now this figure struck me as odd since the State Board of Elections was reporting on their website on election night that there were 232,426 registered voters in the county. That's 1,149 more folks than are in the pool of eligible voters, suggesting that they have a 100% or more in voter registrations. Now we also know not all age eligible persons can vote. There are felons, the mentally incompetent, the illegal immigrants in these numbers, so the discrepancy is even more alarming. Now, my friend also provided me with a report from the Durham County Board of Elections, uh, and this was from October 27th, the day one-stop voting began. And at that time, as shown here, they were reporting 229,194 registered voters. Now, simple math says you subtract that from the number reported on election night, and we have 3,232 new voter registrations that were processed during the early voting period prior to election night. Now, if we take the election night total of registered voters, as shown here, and divide it by the population over 18, <laughs> we get a voter participation rate of 101%. Now, I think we can all agree that census data is an inexact science at best, and at times just a good guess on some things. So I don't want to hang my hat on any, in any sense of these being absolute numbers. But with that said, even a few percentage points difference between their estimate and the reality on the ground doesn't add any significant degree of confidence to their accuracy, nor does it mitigate the alarm the numbers raise here. So my next step was to compare their data to similar data for the state as a whole. The U.S. Census Bureau data for North Carolina shows a population of 10,042,802 as of 2015. They report 22.8% is under the age of 18, leaving 7,753,043 age-eligible citizens who can ostensibly register to vote. The state board reported on election night that there were 6,914,248 registered voters, but that's 89.18% of the total potentially eligible pool. Really? Almost 90%.
And as with Durham County, we know we have to subtract from that number the felons, the illegal immigrants, and the others who are disqualified. And that makes the true percentage even higher. Now, for, I mean, I know we're the greatest state in the country, but even this defies sound reasoning. It begs the question of how and why North Carolina is doing such a fantastic job of getting folks to register to vote at a level far above the national average or any reasonable and logical amount. You know, surely the same voter apathy that yields voter turnouts in elections in non-presidential years in the 20 to 30 percent range and only improving to the 60 to 70 percent range in presidential election years would be similarly reflected in the number of otherwise eligible citizens who merely choose not to register to vote at all. Now, I'm not suggesting that the state data gives us more confidence in the numbers coming out of Durham. And in fact, I'm concluding quite the opposite, that the problems in Durham County just mirror larger problems statewide. You know, now, we know there were machine malfunctions in several precincts there, both during early voting and on election night. But none of that explains the quite curious overall numbers we just reviewed. Now, we know we have a problem getting deceased persons removed from the voting rolls, and we know that many duly registered voters are shown to be well over 100 years old, when in fact that's due to a default date of birth of 1 January 1900 having been entered into the record for anyone whose date of birth wasn't known at the time these records were converted from paper to automated data. Now, surely there is still much work to be done to continue improving the integrity of our elections processes, but Roy Cooper thinks we're just fine the way we are. And he's the chief law enforcement officer in our state at present. Now, folks, I'm just a retired investigator, but if he can't connect these dots, he deserves no place at all in our system of law and justice. Yet he believes that kind of ignorance deserves a place in our governor's mansion. Now, I'll shift gears for a second to address the issues in Bladen County. And a handwriting examiner has determined that out of the hundreds of ballots, uh, mail-in absentee ballots that he was asked to review, he's determined that 167 of them were signed or witnessed by the same six people. And the media has reported this. Now, to think that this has happened in one county alone is itself suspect. So what do we really have here? Facts and circumstances amounting to more than a mere suspicion? Probable cause? Is this the kind of evidence that the Cooper campaign spokespersons use to say there's nothing to the claims of voter fraud in NC, that no one has any basis for challenging the outcome of the election? Seriously, Mr. Cooper? Yeah. I don't think any reasonable person can conclude that the numbers coming out of Durham County are accurate but are rather patently suspect and require the most intensive scrutiny of both product and process in their validation. Each and every voter in North Carolina deserves to have the weight of their vote sustained by eliminating the undue and diluting effect improperly cast ballots have on them. The difference between the votes actually cast and the number of valid registrations can easily be in the thousands statewide. I call on Mr. Cooper to join with Governor McCrory to seek a prompt and accurate resolution to each and every protest filed, regardless of who filed it. We deserve answers. We deserve the truth. Thank you, and God bless the great state of North Carolina, and God bless the United States of America.